when we're developing housing, is it engineered in a way that's going to allow those people to reduce that isolation? Or do you live in this 100 building, a room block that you, the neighbour doesn't know you, you don't have your mailman, you don't have a regular person to go get your coffee and your milk for you to go missing one day and someone says, where's Mary? I haven't seen her today. Mm -hmm. So we are really living in a community very different to what we're used to in our homeland where the entire community knows you. They haven't seen you for a little while, so they try to wait for you. So we're missing that. So we're, we're creating isolation for people who don't need isolation. If anything, they need to break down some of that as well. We are seeing um, a lot of um, aged care workers, but then we need skilled aged care workers. Yeah. And there's a question whether or not the skills and the training that's out there is really keeping us up to date with the latest changes and latest issues yeah. as well, and whether or not they are able to respond to some of the crises that they're seeing. Uh -huh. When it comes to elder abuse, we're hearing a lot of our elders and our women saying, why isn't there mandatory reporting? I have got issues with my family, my father's turned up to hospital, it's obvious that he's been abused, I don't have a legal um, hand to help me, can someone help me here? Mm -hmm. So we do need a system in place of policies or mandatory reporting, we have it for children. Mm -hmm. Why don't we have it for elders and people who have dementia who are fronting to hospitals and not able to, to tell that, that, that something's happening to them as well, which means training the, 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 the allied health services and your doctors to be able to pick that up as well and do something with that as well. 